Gaming on Linux in the year 2024 is just incredible. Valve's compatibility layer Proton, but also advancements in the tools running underneath have really changed the game. Just on Steam alone, I can already play most games. But what about those that don't run? Well, the one and mostly also only thing that prevents many from switching over to Linux are kernel-level anti-cheats. And while many in the online community claim that you can always set up a virtual machine and pass your graphics card through to it, let me just say that this isn't really a good idea. Let's talk about why. So, here's the thing about anti-cheat. The situation is bad, both in terms of compatibility with Linux, but also cheating in general. Now I won't get too deep into this, since I've already made a couple videos about it, but in a nutshell, here's what's going on. Game developers and publishers have been moving away from allowing gamers to host their own servers, mainly to focus on providing an easier entry point for newcomers and a single ranking ladder to climb for all players. This of course led to the problem that not every server can be manually watched for cheaters all the time, so they automated that detection with small programs called anti-cheats. Then of course a race started between cheat makers and those who sell the games, whereas one side just wants to mess up the experience of those who want fair play and the other ones that want to retain the game's integrity and player base. Cheat developers work their way deeper into the operating systems to hide cheats behind drivers, so anti-cheats followed. Regardless of the actual effectiveness of kernel-level anti-cheats, which is actually not as great as it seems, let's talk about on why Linux is special. So, kernel-level anti-cheats usually nest themselves deep into the operating system. And on Linux, we could compare it to root privileges, meaning it could theoretically do anything at once if the developer or a malicious actor who hooks into it want to. And this has already happened in the past with Genshin Impact, by the way. So, one concern of the Linux community is of course security. And given the small player base compared to the gaming market as a whole, no one really wanted to develop stuff like this anyway. Another concern from the perspective of the game developers is of course Linux open source nature, whereas you can easily reconfigure stuff in the kernel if you know what you're doing. And this is technically correct, but I guess that the Windows kernel is also available to cheat makers in some form, so it's not really a concern for me personally. Now the solution to this problem is of course to just run Windows if you really want to play those games. You can install it on a second PC, dual boot operating systems, or according to many, set up a Windows virtual machine, then pass through your GPU for performance and play your games. The last method in particular is, from a technical perspective, really cool. You basically just install a virtualization manager that supports Linux inbuilt hypervisor KVM, assign some resources and just install Windows. If you pass through a GPU, then the video output that goes to your monitor will actually just be your VM. And if you wouldn't know it, you could assume that you're just running Windows natively on your bare bones hardware. You can also pass through other devices like connected controllers, your actual mouse if you want to configure it, and like I don't know, maybe even a VR headset. But coming back to anti-cheats. If you want to play a game that either doesn't have its anti-cheat ported to Linux at all, or they just don't want to enable support, either because they're lazy, overprotective, or it's too customized to just work, then many suggest the pass-through method. But let me tell you, this is not a good idea. Using virtual machines is very often against the terms of services of the game or anti-cheat itself, and many of them are not compatible with them anyway. Now, there are many things that you can do to hide that you're using a VM, like passing through your CPU's manufacturer data, allowing the VM to access your hardware hashes, or hide the stuff that would indicate a VM to Windows. But it will not always work. Valorant's anti-cheat Vanguard is notorious for blocking VMs, no matter how hard you try. And frankly, it's not really hard to detect a VM as an anti-cheat. See, you cannot give the VM all of the resources of the underlying host. So if the VM wants to access some assigned space and it behaves weird, delayed or the memory is filled with some obscure application, often called a balloon device, then it will probably ban you. But there are of course other games than Valorant, which according to many don't seem to ban VM players often, or it's easy to work around them. But here's the thing. This can change at any time, and if you eventually do get banned, there is essentially nothing you can do about it since you already broke the terms of service. For a serious gamer, this is not a risk worth taking. 
But let's say we neglect all of that and you're just using a VM to play games that are not as accessible on Linux as they are on Windows. Like games from the Windows exclusive Game Pass app. Well, first of all, in order to even utilize GPU pass-through, you need to have at least two GPUs. Most just use the onboard one for Linux, if their processor even has one. There are ways how you can do single pass-through with Nvidia and AMD, but these things mostly only apply to enterprise-grade graphics cards, not meant for gaming, or it is incredibly difficult to get working. Especially with new drivers occasionally messing the configuration up, since you are not meant to use it that way. So, if you have a system like me, a Ryzen processor without an onboard or a second dedicated graphics card, then passing your GPU through to a virtual machine is not really an option. I mean, you're essentially just ripping away that one output that Linux has, which it doesn't really like. It could assume that the drivers have just crashed, or in rare cases, even your mainboard behaves odd if there is a change. As with UEFI configurations, the operating system can work deeply integrated with it. You basically have a high chance of crashing your PC, or even if it survives, that the GPU doesn't come back to Linux. It's just not pretty. And then there's of course performance. Virtualization speeds have become really, really good, especially with type 1 hypervisors like KVM. But you're still running two operating systems at the same time, whereas performance is limited by the shared CPU, RAM and of course storage resources. If you install Linux and your Windows VM on the same drive, then it will automatically work harder. So what you really want is to assign dedicated resources exclusively to the VM and ideally get a whole dedicated disk for optimal performance. This of course heavily depends on your system's configuration, but we shouldn't forget that most people don't really have a beefy rig and a difference of 10 to 15 FPS could already mean a drop from 60. With virtualization and GPU pass-through, the main bottleneck is often the CPU, which is the resource that is constantly being accessed. If your system has a lot of cores and threads, then you might not notice an impact. But for those with a lesser core count, say 6 or below, it definitely will be noticeable. GPU pass-through is a cool concept and it actually has a lot of use cases. But for gaming, if you're trying to work around an anti-cheats limitation, then it's not a good idea at least if you value your accounts. But if you don't do it because of anti-cheat, then don't let me stop you. All I can do is to tell you to be cautious and not believe everything you read online. Yes, maybe it worked for some and they didn't get banned, but it's no guarantee. And if something happens, then you're pretty much helpless. I like playing my games natively on Linux and so far I'm successful. The only game I want to finish is Destiny 2, since I've been at it since 2014, but there are other ways to play it for a short period of time. In the end, I really hope that I could give you some insight into the limitations of GPU pass-through, but I also don't want to stop you if you want to try it. Just be cautious, that's all I'm saying. So if you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and why don't you also subscribe to the channel while you're at it. And please let us also know in the comments on what you think about this topic. Thank you so much for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.